Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Critical Podcast. I am your host, Jimmy Good, and oh my gosh, we're back. I'm so sorry it's been so long, but for people who've been listening to the show for a while now, they know that I just moved all the way across the country from the great state of Minnesota to the great state of California. So it's been, oh my gosh, like over a month, and I have not missed a week for like 280 weeks, so it felt weird not doing this. But it was kind of a nice reprieve, and I've just been kind of busy with a bunch of other stuff. But I wanted to hop back on here, get the show back up and running. Let me preface this, too, um, for people who have been listening for a long time. I'm going to try my best. We'll keep going, if I can, week to week. But it might turn into kind of like a bi-weekly show. But I will definitely let you guys know. But I really wanted to get into it this week, because guess what? The PlayStation Showcase just happened, and a ton of stuff was talked about or shown. And oh my gosh. Man, PlayStation, swinging for the fences, pretty cool stuff, so let's dive right in. Now, I'm not going to talk about every single thing that they discussed. I want to talk about the things that I am the most excited about, and uh, as I noticed over social media, uh, and you know, myself included, Insomniac is, uh, well, they're doing a lot. Uh, I think that's, that's a nice way of putting it. I swear those people don't sleep. They don't, uh, because they're working on a lot of different titles, and obviously we all kind of knew Spider-Man 2 was in the works, but finally we get to see a little cinematic trailer of it. And, you know, it's got uh, Peter, and it also has Miles, which is great, so I don't know if co-op is going to be a thing. I would like it to be, but I think there's a better chance this is a Grand Theft Auto 5 situation where you switch between the two. The narrator, I'm pretty sure, as a, I'm, I'm like a, I think like a adequate Spider-Man fan, I'm pretty sure it's Craven the Hunter, which is a really cool choice. He's kind of, I don't know if you call him a fan favorite, uh, but he is this big game hunter uh, who is basically looking for the greatest prey on the planet because he's hunted, you know, the biggest and scariest animals, and now he comes to New York to hunt Spider-Man and Miles, I guess, you know, by proxy. But at the very end of that trailer, uh, he kind of is talking about, like, are you going to give me the challenge I, I'm looking for? And then you hear Venom, and he just goes, you're like, we will, or something like that. And it's like, oh my gosh, like, there's Venom. And a brief uh, kind of aside, not a complete spoiler, I won't say exactly who Venom is, but they're taking Venom, I believe, in a different direction in this game as far as, like, the person inside the suit, which I think is actually really interesting. And... Uh, I thought narratively makes more sense, uh, you know, because Eddie Brock, I think, was a great villain and, you know, was like a good rival for Peter. But the person that they put in the shoes or in the suit of Venom now, I think, has a lot more kind of history with Peter. And that makes it interesting. And no, it's not Aunt May. Uh, <laughs> now that would be something. Uh, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. First game was you know, to to pardon the pun, amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. And it came out in such a stacked year, but still probably one of my favorite superhero games of all time. I think I 100%ed it, and I don't normally do that. Not that that game was super hard to 100%, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to two. And I still hold out this hope or idea that they will bundle Miles Morales with um, Spider-Man 2 in some capacity. That's not confirmed, uh, I just didn't play Miles Morales yet, and yeah, I'm excited to try that out. The problem is I still don't have a PlayStation 5, so if anybody has like a spare one lying around they just want to ship over, that'd be great. I would love that. We also saw God of War Ragnarok. What can we say about God of War? What can I say? You know, it, it looks a lot like the first one. Nothing wrong with that. The continuation of that story. If you have not played uh, that game or... Uh, you know, have figured out a lot about that storyline, that plot, then this trailer is going to give a lot away, and it kind of gives a lot away for this game as well. I'm sure there's bigger twists and turns and some characters we still haven't seen in full yet, like Thor, but I think they did release a picture of him, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, but Odin, I'm still really looking forward to Odin, and they did announce who would be doing the voice of Odin. I won't tell you guys here, but I thought it was a really interesting choice, and I was like, Huh, okay, I'm familiar with this actor. Let's get into it. But yeah, um, more of kind of that good um, God of War 2018 goodness, as it were. Some different enemy types, though, uh, which is, you know, kind of more... 
I, maybe they are they fall into Norse mythology, but some of it looked like maybe not Norse. There's kind of like this big crocodile thing, which again might be. I'm not I'm not brushed up on that stuff, but I hold out this kind of idea or hope from a while ago where they talked about after God of War 2018 doing so well that they were going to be working on five five sequels i don't know if that's the case so this would be the first of that so there'd be four after that so yeah this sounds like this is going to be the end of the norse mythos stuff that kratos will be dealing with thus the name ragnarok i i'm thinking movie wise i was like oh they're probably going to do three of these you know they're going to do this is going to be the middle one and then you're going to do your return of the king kind of thing at the end but i guess not which is great because uh, I think, you know, you're going to use as much of that Norse mythos as you can and twist it and kind of change it to how they want to do it. But then it gives them creative license to go after the Aztec, you know, mythos or like Central American mythos stuff or Egyptian mythos or some various Asian mythos that they could go after. I think that would be really, really cool. Like, I just I want to see Kratos fight Ra from Egyptian mythology. You know, that would be. Oh, uh, <laughs> I would be all over that. I'd be like, yeah, here we go. Like, I just want Kratos at the end of this game to be like, I can't rest until all the gods are dead. You know, like something like that. I think it would be pretty neat. But yeah, uh, that game still a ways out. Uh, <laughs> I think we're still, you know, these games, a lot of them, it was like, I if they released a year, like a lot of them were like releasing like a year as opposed to a date. That's fine. Take your time with it. That's totally cool. It's just nice to know it's coming. We all knew it was coming. Uh, but a change of director, apparently that's something that um, Sony Santa Monica does all the time. And I was like, oh, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, but it sounds like uh, Corey Barlog's still very heavily, heavily um, involved in this, but also working on other things as well. Uh, we're starting to see, I think, with, you know, already with Insomniac and um, some other developers, that with Sony... If you, you know, you do well enough, um, you know, kind of big enough, you start, you see these groups work on many projects at a time. And, uh, but Insomniac still is like, that is nutter butters. Uh, back to them, they did release a cinematic trailer. I think it's, it said like 2023. And I kind of guessed right away what it was, but I thought it was going to be tied in um, to Spider-Man. Could be still, we'll talk about that. But that is Wolverine. And oh my goodness, uh, that I think for a lot of people is like, oh my gosh, Wolverine, Wolverine, they're getting a video game. Now, the comparisons between Wolverine and Spider-Man will be there because it's Insomniac working on it. But Wolverine obviously doesn't have the same typical themes as Spider-Man, doesn't have the same mobility as Spider-Man. But I'm really hopeful that this game can bring him back in a big and gory way. I, I'm really hoping uh, because... Insomniac, for the most part, um, there's a few exceptions, but for the most part, they stick to kind of um, rated T for T games, and that's totally fine. But if we go back to the wonderful X-Men Origins Wolverine video game tie-in, uh, where you had Wolverine, he could like pounce, he could like jump like 30 or 40 feet. I don't know why, but he could, and it was amazing. And he had battle damage, so the more damage you took, you could see, like, his adamantium skeleton and stuff. It was so amazing. It was so cool, and it was such a gory game. It really kind of leaned into, um, like, Wolverine having his own game and what it would normally be like, because we see Wolverine in so many of these other kind of fighting games or Ultimate Alliance, and he's great. He's still, he's like, a, like, one of the greatest brawlers of all time because he can dish it and take it, right? But we don't always get to see him in that primal glory, you know, covered in blood. Like, you know, <laughs> so I don't know if that's what this game is going to be, but it's exciting to hear they're working on it. And that kind of alludes potentially to the fact that maybe, uh, you know, what Insomniac is doing is building their own superhero universe, when the first Spider-Man came out back in 2018, 2018 was a great year, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Monster Hunter World. Uh, need I say more? Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, uh, but there is an Avengers Tower, and you can, like, swing by it with Spidey, and he would say, like, oh, yeah, you know, I wish the Avengers were here, but they're all over on the West Coast. I always thought that was kind of a nod over to Crystal Dynamics um, working on the Avengers game, Marvel's Avengers. But maybe not. Maybe this is just their own universe and their own take. Because 
it looks like what they're doing with this Spider-Man is they're doing some things that are pretty uh, typical, straightforward Spider-Man stuff, but with some of the villains, they're kind of taking their own spin. So maybe that means they they kind of have somewhat of a creative license on some of these things, or they're getting the opportunity, I should say, to do that, which is really fascinating to me. So there's the chance that they might be building their own superhero universe that's going to be interconnected and we'll see Wolverine and Spider-Man team up at some point. That'd be really cool. And also somebody pointed out to me that there may or may not have been a Hulk license plate in that Wolverine trailer. Give me Wolverine versus Hulk. Don't let it be the first fight, but that would be so cool. What if that's like, oh my gosh, what if that's the story of the game? Oh, like you have to hunt the Hulk. Oh my gosh. (laughs) It probably won't be that, but a guy can dream. Yeah, that'd be cool. The other big thing for me as far as standout goes from this um, showcase was Chia. Uh, I, I'm probably saying that wrong. It's T-C-H-I-A. Chia? Chia? And uh, you play as a young woman who can, like, it's Super Mario Odyssey. You're possessing animals and creatures and stuff. And then it's like, you are a wolf or you are a sea turtle. Like, <laughs> and you got to go around the world. I don't know exactly what the point is besides that. And that's enough for me. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a beautiful world. It looks really fun. And I was like, yeah. I, I saw somebody when we were uh, live streaming it. And someone's like, oh, yeah, I can see Jimmy streaming this game. And I'm like, yeah, it sounds good to me. Uh, plays a bunch of different animals. That sounds good. You know, a chill game, kind of a exploration type. I'd be in. But there's a lot of other things. Um, they showed off Gran Turismo 7, I believe. They showed off Ghostwire Tokyo. That one looks good. Uh, yeah. Um, Alan Wake. A remaster, and then also uh, the last thing I do want to mention here about the showcase was the announcement of a remake for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now, I want to be honest with you guys. I know so many people are like, "This is one of the greatest Star Wars stories ever told." I played it when I was young. I got to the first combat encounter, and I didn't realize it was going to be Dragon Age style because I just didn't know back then, and I immediately stopped because the <laughs> the combat in Star Wars, for me, like Jedi Academy and stuff, is so frantic, and it's fast-paced, it's real-time, but what they were doing was, like, you'd run up, and it would be, like, it would pause you, and it'd be, like, would you like to swing your sword? Would you like to throw a thermal detonator? Would you like to use a health pack? That, to me, was not compelling. So, what I'm really hoping, really, really hoping, is that even though this game is years off, that we get a combat system that's real-time. Look at, you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake. You don't have to do it exactly like that, but maybe consider it. Maybe consider doing something that does have those kind of, um, you know, your ATB, like kind of you can pause, you know, and pick a move type of thing or slow down time, but still have active combat. That, to me, would get me in. I'd be like, now I'm in. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm really hopeful for that because I think with a remake, um, again, it's something that you have the chance to really change something up while keeping you know the story intact Uh, maybe kind of uh, add things like Final Fantasy 7 did but at the same time I just don't I never want to see like a remake but that is actually just a remaster where it's just an up-resed version you know like I, I want and that's really what a remake should be is to be able to change things up and you know building it from the ground up in a different way but I'm trying to hold on to thematic elements at least that's the way I look at it maybe people out there listening to it are like yeah no man That's the exact opposite of what I want. (laughs) But yeah, that's kind of cool. I was like, wow, look at that. But yeah, we only got a little cinematic tease, not even like a full trailer and stuff. That game is, um, yeah, that's early days. That is early days. But this press conference, or I should say showcase, felt a lot like how a press conference should have been. This felt very E3-ish to me anyway. Lots of announcements for things that are kind of a ways out, but kind of a reason to still be part of, Uh, or to get, um, you know, a PlayStation or a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, uh, which, yeah, a lot of these games will be playable on PlayStation 4, so I'm very curious when we get those comparison videos uh, between the two, like Horizon Zero Dawn, or Horizon Forbidden West, I should say, uh, where they were talking about, like, yeah, like, you know, it works really well on both, but on 5, there's way more lighting and texture and detail and all that stuff. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Um, As long as the games are good, that's what I'm most excited about. So like I said before, if you have an extra PlayStation 5 lying around, like most people do, that's a wink. If you guys are only listening to this, you can't see me winking at the camera, but (laughs) 
<laughs> um, just send it my way. I would appreciate that so much. But yeah, that was the PlayStation Showcase. Again, I thought it was really interesting. Pretty cool. Lots of cool games coming out. And I'm really curious uh, to see when a lot of these come out, too. Uh, because I, I'm, I'm excited about them, for sure. But uh, they <laughs> they are still cooking. <laughs> rightfully so you know what we are we're so we're so quick to consume these things over like a weekend or a week and we've wait for them for years so it's just like you know what we can wait we can be patient right right yeah yeah but i'm looking forward to it anyway now we get to move into that segment of the show that i like to call that you like to call that we all like to call time killers that's right it's time for time killers there we go. <laughs> uh, so, first off, I want to say this too. You probably noticed a different background. Like I said before, I moved, so now we're just hanging out in the apartment. I don't know if we'll if I'll keep it. I'll probably keep it the same way because I kind of have my computer set up this way. But maybe I'll put more things over on the walls over here. So if you guys have any suggestions or anything, I got a bunch of stuff I want to hang up. But um, I don't. I'm just throwing that into time killers because setting up the apartment is kind of a time killer. But it's funny. I have the same setup as I did back home. It's like computer here tv right here <laughs> but when i stream i usually sit back a bit further so don't worry um, my eyes are not um getting burned out or anything like that <laughs> but speaking of so i've been streaming all of, you know when i can a lot of aliens fire team elite that came out a few weeks ago i dig it it's really fun i'm not even a huge alien fan but I, I respect and appreciate the gameplay. I think it's really nice. And if you are an Alien fan, there's a lot to love here. Lots of, you know, um, nods towards the movies, obviously. Lots of little kind of inside jokes and things. But it also pays a lot of respect towards Prometheus and Alien Covenant with some of the levels, which I was amazed by. I was like, what? they're referencing these movies that... We're not necessarily bad, but we're not as beloved as Alien or Aliens. So I thought that was kind of cool to see that. And this game, I think a lot of people on the surface just think, oh yeah, it's a game where you run down corridors in a spaceship and shoot aliens. That's like the first campaign, but then the other ones really change up the formula quite a bit. And it gets pretty chaotic. Now, it is a $40 game, but there is a lot of polish to it. It, it plays really well. And they just gave out another new class. Um, another campaign is coming for free. They're really showing a lot of support and love to the game. And that really endears me to any project or team when they're like, hey, you know what? We're going to give you this thing and you're going to buy it. And uh, But we also want to keep giving you stuff free later on. That's what really endeared me to Monster Hunter World is that it, it sold really well. And they just kept giving out free stuff and it kept me coming back. So I've been playing that a lot, streaming that. Uh, over on the Twitch channel, if you're ever interested. That's where I'm going to probably cover games more so in the future, as opposed to doing these reviews that come out like two weeks late. Because <laughs> it takes a while for me to beat these games. Especially for a co-op game like this, I've not really played it by myself. I usually play with at least one other person, and then we have a bot that fills in. So you can play this game single player. You can play it completely offline, I believe, as well. But I was like, ah, I just don't want to play with the, the Android bots that <laughs> can kind of follow you around. I was like, I'd rather play with people. And we've had a good time. Uh, I usually play as the Technician, which is a class that you have like a turret. And then uh, you have these little electric kind of um, grenades you can throw on the ground. That will kind of cover an area, slow uh, xenomorphs down. And you can uh, that does a little bit of damage to them. Gets allows you to get better shots off. But I want to say this. There is a, a personal and a large flamethrower, two distinct ones in this game, and they're both amazing. Probably the best flamethrowers I've ever played with in any video game, and if you guys know me at all, I love, love, love flamethrowers. They sound good, they look good, and they are very, very effective. I love them so dang much. Oh my gosh, flamethrowers. I was playing last night without a flamethrower for a while, and then when I got it back, I was like, yeah, this is where I belong. <laughs> It's like, this is what I need. But yeah, if you're interested, uh, I would say definitely check it out if you're an Alien fan, even if you're not. But again, this is a very, you gotta play with buddies type of game. like you you Or you should, because that's where the fun is had. And once you beat the, what is it, four campaigns they have right now, then there is also a Horde mode that unlocks, which is very difficult, uh, but a lot of fun to just hanging out and chatting with your friends. And yeah, it's a great game. And it's a kind of a nice... Um, precursor i think to back for blood which is coming up here which i'm also looking forward to 
I think we were, I've talked to people about this. This like screams Game Pass game to me, but I think because Back for Blood is coming, uh, Xbox can kind of pick and choose like what types of games they want on there. And if you don't want a bunch of co-op shooters, uh, I don't know, maybe, or maybe I don't, I don't understand how Game Pass works. So <laughs> I think every game should, should be a Game Pass game. Uh, but anyway, I digress. I say that for now while I have Game Pass, but if I don't have it one day, I'll be like, no game should be Game Pass game. <laughs> <laughs> see, you see how the switch happens there no uh anyway so i've been playing that i have hades and i'm planning on checking that out maybe even today uh and i think song of iron came out um which is a kind of side-scrolling viking game made by one person um cool art style and lighting and it might be coming to game pass Ugh, i'll have to check that out too but uh yeah that's kind of as far as what i've been playing i've been watching a lot of stuff though caught up on my hero academia the show is incredible. I love it so much. Uh, it just inspires me, and it's also kind of switching into focusing maybe more on the villains for a little bit, which is really cool to me. I, I'm a big fan of the villains. I think it's it's kind of cool. And I, I still posit this for anybody out there who's a big anime fan, uh, who's also loved Naruto. The Akatsuki are like the greatest evil organization we know of right now. But I think one day... One day in the future, we will talk about the League of Villains from My Hero Academia as maybe being comparable. I don't know. I, I just, I, I see it. I see the future. Um, and unlike a lot of these anime um, in the past, this is not like a group of adults that is already like established. This is like they're also young and trying to like get stronger and to learn things. So it's like maybe one day we'll look at them, you know, years in the future and be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. Look how strong and powerful they've become. Yeah. That's the hope, anyway. And uh, enigmatic, or also just interesting. I guess the Akatsuki was more enigmatic, but uh, yeah. Anyway, My Academia. Catching up on Black Clover. I like Black Clover a lot. Uh, has, you know, your kind of typical anime tropes in it, but also changes some things up, especially with the main character, which I really appreciate. Um, it's kind of like if Naruto met Bleach but it was in a medieval fantasy world. That's what I would tell people. If you, if I want to sell you on Black Clover, that's how I'd do it. <laughs> that's pretty good, too. Uh, I also watched um, Mugen Train, um, Demon Slayer Mugen Train. I was crying. Like, it was, it's amazing. Not only is the animation good, uh, the story is good. It's just, it, it's just a beautiful show. Uh, and I'm not usually one who enjoy like who goes out of my way to watch like the anime movies because usually they have little to no bearing on the actual story going forward. Not the case here. I really think that uh, some of the stuff that happened here will be coming back and they'll have ramifications in the show. But man, um, and the character they kind of introduce and focus on um, it was fantastic. I loved him. He was he's in he's so cool. He's so great uh, and. Man, it's such a good-looking show. It's such a great show. And I thought it was going to be over, but then it's like, nope, there's some more. It's like with the Tomorrow War. I was like, this, this should be over by now. And it's like, nope, here's like 20 or 30 more minutes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So check out uh, Mugen Train because it's it's beautiful. Uh, and it's it's so interesting. It's so cool. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and then I started watching Doug Days, which is on Disney+. Plus. It's uh, focused on Doug from Up. Everybody knows. I believe Golden Retriever. I want to say Golden Retriever, uh, who has the collar on, and you can hear his thoughts and uh, his kind of life with Carl after the events of uh, Up, which I went and watched again recently, and I I don't know. I might make a video about it, uh, but man, uh, I've said in the past here that like Pixar films are designed to make you cry. I'm wrong. Like It's, it's not just that. It's to make you feel, and if you can watch the first... 12 minutes of up and not feel something that is that's crazy to me uh i years later i knew it was coming and i was like here i'm just gonna watch this and just like i was still and like oh man and the music by michael giacchino like the piano and stuff i it's like it's hard for me to talk about uh because <laughs> it's it is like a master class in visual storytelling with um with the music also just kind of complimenting the whole thing. It is, uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's tragic. It is, uh, it is just, yeah. Oh my gosh. So 
up is still great. Uh, <laughs> the rest of the movie is kind of different than that first little bit, um, because obviously it can't hold that tone the whole time, but man, um, yeah, cool. It's just cool. Uh, and there's a lot of themes in Up. Um, a lot of cool, interesting things in that movie. So yeah, uh, but Doug Days, check out Doug Days because it's not as hardcore emotional as that, but it's very fun, still heartfelt, uh, and as a guy who is missing his golden retrievers back home, uh, here's a glamour shot of Lily, um, they really get the characterization down of Doug, uh, and he does something in one of the most recent, maybe it was the last episode, but um, he does something where he kind of rests his head on the arm of a chair, um, and that's what uh, Ranger does back home, and I was like, oh my gosh, like... <laughs> It, like, hit me immediately. Like, ah. But, uh, man, um, Mr. Fredrickson, and, oh, man, the, it's just, it's a fun show, and they're only, like, a few minutes long, so it's not, like, a big commitment. Check out Doug Days. It's wonderful. It's very good. It's very charming. That's good. I think that's pretty much, oh, I watched White Lotus on HBO Max. Uh, it was, like, a six-part miniseries, um, kind of about these various different groups who go to this really fancy hotel in Hawaii and all the things that happen there. Uh if you like kind of those almost like slice of life, well, maybe like slice of like a really rich life uh, <laughs> kind of shows, um, not Grand Budapest Hotel exactly, but, you know, kind of like if you've ever watched a movie or TV show about like a hotel and you're kind of following multiple different groups and then how they interact later on, kind of interesting. Uh, so, yeah, that was what I watched over there. Not too bad. I liked it. It was interesting. Um, and then... I think that's pretty much everything. I've just been kind of watching some movies here and there. But that's as far as Time Killing goes here. But as many of you probably recognized on the, on the channel, I've been going to Disneyland. And I've been kind of doubling up where I kind of shoot um, a few different things there in a day. So it's not just like I go every day. <laughs> I want to, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> I'm showing restraint. But I'm now a key holder there. And, yeah, I'm trying to get down there. I love going there. I really, really do. And it seems like some of you guys out there enjoy it as well. Uh, so there's probably going to be a lot more vlogs on the channel. And, yeah, it's just cool. Like, you know, one big thing, one big difference, you know, for me uh, as someone who's been creating videos for many years and has been vlogging for many years, I just, I've never lived this close to a place like that. So it feels like a really cool opportunity for me. Like, I, I love doing it. And... I just get so many more responses like people like it like people more people watch the videos and more people kind of comment on them and that's really what I'm about is the, the communication uh, and that is, is so cool to me and I've gotten to meet some great people down there I've gotten to forge some kind of friendships and uh, meet some people who I'm a big fan of and spend some time with them and yeah it's just been cool it's kind of surreal but yeah I just love going down there and um being this kind of theme park guy uh, and just hanging out and just chatting with people. And by theme park guy, I mean like sitting down next to somebody on a ride and be like, hey, how's it going? You know, I'm Jimmy. Nice to meet you. Like, or just standing in line and chatting with me. I just, I love that. It's so much fun because there's uh, so much more of a connection I think you can make. And when you go to these places, everybody's there for the same reason, to have some fun, you know? And uh, that's, that's what I'm about. So yeah, I hope you guys are liking those. Please let me know. Uh, I would appreciate it that but it seems like most of you guys do enjoy that but don't worry like i said we'll still do the gaming stuff but that might be more on twitch because it's just easier for me to do and i do have some kind of changes coming to the channel over time i'm not going to throw a bunch at you um but i have some ideas i'm going to talk to the patrons first about it but then uh, kind of implement them over the next weeks and months as it were so uh yeah but i appreciate you um kind of sticking with me. <laughs> uh, but now it's time to move into my personal favorite segment of the show, which is community feedback and questions. Yes. Oh, speaking about connections, I, I just, I love, I love hearing from you guys. So these are over on our Discord. If you ever want access to that, please let me know. Happy to give it to you. So this one comes in from Zora Caviar. I'm so sorry. I don't think I've answered these yet. Uh, but this one comes in. Yeah, my buddy Caden. Caden, how you doing, buddy? Uh, host of the Great Game Debate. Go check them out. I was on an episode recently, so go check that out. It was like my first podcast back in. <laughs> it wasn't even here. It was somebody else. It was so cool to be invited. Uh, he says, any cool spots in your new area? Restaurants, parks, shops, etc. How many human contacts have you made since moving? Is the coronavirus still making it difficult at all to meet people? 
Great questions. Any cool new spots in your area? Uh, yeah, I've gone to a couple. Um, I went to um, a restaurant called The Castaway, which is up on a hill in Burbank here for my birthday. Uh, there's a few, like, or I should say hill, mountain. There's a few, like, restaurants that are, like, on the side of a mountain here that are so cool. Like, you get such great views. Uh, so that downtown Burbank area is really cute. There's a ton of different um, restaurants. I went to a Japanese place recently called kabuki uh which is something i always shout and would do with my buddy joe when we play monster hunter world to do the kabuki dance because it was like a um an emote you could do uh and i i love the japanese culture so i was like ah kabuki so i met with a friend there um at, which was really cool actually someone who's been on the show before uh so stuff like that like on this show and i was like oh my gosh we get to meet in person which is great uh and yeah so some cool spots i actually went to like this japanese themed like it, it sold a bunch of Pokemon plushies and a bunch of candy and, like, uh, anime backpacks and stuff. So I bought something uh, there for my sister for our birthday, which was recent, you know, which is pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, I still – I haven't gone out to a bunch of parks besides, like, Disney. So it's not – I don't know. They call it Disneyland Park, you know, or Disneyland Resort. Not necessarily like a park, but uh, I hope that kind of answers your question. And, oh, yeah, the other day I posted this on Instagram – I'm posting a bunch of stuff on there as far as like my day to day goes. There's a really, really cool, uh, it's like seven and a half foot tall, 600 pound statue bronze of Batman. Batman from Hush. And uh, it was the Visit Burbank organization kind of talked to DC about it. And this is like Burbank is the home kind of of DC. I'm like Cartoon Network and all this stuff. It's nuts. It's like crazy to see this stuff when I'm driving around. I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, but, uh, they brought this big statue and he's sitting down by the AMC over there uh, by the movie theater. And it's this really cool, man, it's amazing. It's really, it's well done. And I love stuff like this. It's kind of like appreciating the history and the pop culture of stuff. And I'm like, man, we need to do more of this stuff. Like, you know, if we're going to make stuff like this, it's like, that's so cool to me. But it was also interesting to see that because like right as I walked down there when I was in Burbank the other day, I saw it and then looked up to the right and there's all these Shang-Chi posters because Shang-Chi, or is it Shang-Chi? Shang Shang I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that. Uh, but it was up there so I could see DC and Marvel at the same time. You know, it was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I went to a place called The Yard House down there. A cool place for like a restaurant for lunch. But there's a ton of different places to eat down here. Uh, I also went to, I thought it was, it's supposed to be Korean barbecue, but it was like Japanese, they said for this time. Uh, but it was like you go and they give you food that's uncooked and you have like a little grill at your table that you grill stuff on um, when my sister and brother-in-law were in town. And it was delicious. Uh, it was so good. I They had like these um, <laughs> like all you could eat portion sizes like if you wanted to pay for that. We just did like the a la carte um, because we weren't going to be sitting there for that long. And there was like a, a time limit because I could just sit there all day. But yeah, it was delicious, super good. I think it was called Gyu Kaku, something like that. Um, but yeah, it was really tasty. So yeah, if you guys uh, ever looking for something cool, try out one of these places that has like the grill in the middle of the table and you kind of grill it yourself. Oh, oh it was great because I, I, I love grilling food. So like <laughs> for me, like I get it. Like some people be like, why would I pay some place to cook my own food? Uh, but for me, it was really fun because then I could be like, oh, I'll leave that on a little longer and then take it off when I was ready for it. Ah, oh, delicious. I love it so much. Uh, and then the last place, it was on a video, but I went to the Blue Bayou with my mom, uh, which is right, like, intertwined, basically, with the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland. Uh, it is, what is the word I used? <laughs> it is just, it is always nighttime in there. Um, it is just a perpetual nighttime. And you're sitting out kind of in a Louisiana bayou, and there are no mosquitoes, uh, but you can have this kind of southern uh, fare or food. I do like I like the surf and turf there, a little steak and lobster action. Oh. Uh, but you can get like a Monte Cristo is what my mom got. But if you want to see that, that's in the, I think it's like the last Disneyland video um, that we did while my mom was there. It was like day two. You can see it. I love going there. It is probably one of my favorite restaurants almost anywhere. <laughs> I, I enjoy it. It's probably because when I go on Pirates of the Caribbean, I always look over at it. I'm like, I want to go back there. But yeah, 
So, uh, great question. But I also had asked, um, like, what people have been up to as far as, like, gaming and stuff. And uh, Zora, at the time, this was a little while ago. I am so sorry about this. He said, my friend got me into a format of Magic the Gathering called Commander. I built a deck around a commander that creates one-time-use artifacts called treasures and also makes creatures stronger if you use treasures to cast them so my deck box is a miniature treasure chest with all the cards in golden sleeves in the bottom hidden under a pile of fake gold coins and gemstones the drama with a sticking out tongue face that's man that's fantastic to which arctic anarchy replied yeah i've been playing irl magic again and it's basically just commander duels did a six player one recently it was pretty insane that is so cool oh my gosh um, I just realized I did not answer those other questions that Zora sent to me. How much human contact have I had since moving? I've had a good amount. Um, there are some days where I'll go a few where I'm like still just here, like trying to do stuff online, trying to set things up. Um, but I've been trying to meet up. And I've, like I said, I've met great people um, in the parks and stuff. That's a really great place for me to meet people, people who are kind of interested in the same things. Uh, so that's for me really like a nice place that I can go to. Uh, cause if I, if you like went to a restaurant, like you sat down next to other people and you're like, Hey, you guys come here all the time. Me too. Like, you know, like <laughs> it might be kind of strange. Uh, but Disneyland, you could totally do that. Uh, and is the coronavirus still making it difficult to meet uh, at all to meet people? Not completely. Not yet. Uh, I know there have been, um, kind of these variants that have been popping up so i'm not sure if in the coming weeks and months if that will shift dramatically in the other direction i don't know um i i really hope not but uh for me i've been just doing a lot of applying online and job hunting online um which is redundant because i think i said twice there but that's kind of how it is nowadays there isn't a lot of it doesn't seem like um in-person auditions like immediately it's a lot of like you send in your best audition online and if they like you then you know they'll bring you in so Still trying to kind of figure all that out. <laughs> and it's been really great because the people I've met here, people, they're so kind and lovely and they like, they all want to help even if they're not part of the industry. And it's like, for me, that's not the goal. It's like, I'm just happy to make real genuine connections with people. Just lovely people. I just like spend hours chatting with just like kindred spirits, I think. Um, and yeah, I, I love it. It's just, it's so cool. It's just like, it feels not completely like home yet, but it does help because I miss my family. I really do. Dang, man. I really do. Uh, and then this one comes in from Mecca He says, Jimmy, now that the fall rush is upon us, what are the biggest video games you're looking forward to? What are your expectations for gaming for the rest of the year? And what has been your goatee up until now or up till now? Great question. Mecca Reca, uh, Wes, my buddy Wes, also great game debate. Go check him out. Tell them, tell them you guys want me back on the show. It, by the side note, if you guys ever want me to be on a show or whatever, just like let me know. I'll try to reach out to people. Uh, with reckless abandon, it's okay. What's the worst they could say? No or not respond? That's fine. Anyway, uh, biggest video game releases I'm looking forward to. I'm still looking forward to Back for Blood. I kind of know what to expect with that. I'm a Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2 fan, uh, which is funny because I'm not really like a zombie movie guy. Oh, side note, watch the What If Marvel Zombies. Kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the what if stuff's pretty good though the doctor strange one uh man check it out that's see that's cg that i like um is that considered cell shading or cell shaded i don't know anyway sorry tangents uh back for blood i'm still looking forward to halo infinite i'm kind of amazed that it's december 8th at the time of this recording that it's supposed to come out i thought that would be september 25th you know or something that's kind of the flagship they call like holiday season but i for a long time ago microsoft was kind of doing late september early october it seems a little late for me and i'm saddened by the fact that they won't have co-op campaign or forge at launch maybe i wouldn't dive into the forge but the co-op campaign would be great um but yeah i'm looking forward to that but maybe i should say i don't know if i'm gonna get halo infinite the campaign i might just get the free multiplayer i don't know that it feels so weird to say that because like for so long like you only got multiplayer if you bought them together but times are changing you know and i understand that that's totally fine and that means more people will get the chance to play a probably very very good competent first person shooter uh that's a bit different i'm i'm looking forward to it i think that'll be cool uh yeah but there's man there's a ton of games <laughs> <laughs> and it's weird that I'm talking about two first-person shooters when I joked about with Joe in the past. I'm like, Joe's like the first-person shooter guy. That's the stuff I'm looking forward to. Uh, yeah, I think those are the biggest things. Uh, what are my expectations for gaming for the rest of the year? That's a great question. You know, for me, um, I've learned that I, I don't have as much time to play games anymore as I used to. 
So my expectation is going to be that the games serve me, not the other way around, and that I hopefully can enjoy them, uh, you know, a couple times a week. Uh, there have been a couple days here where I haven't even looked at like a TV screen for a whole day. And uh, I think that's been healthy for me personally. Maybe that's not everybody's ML, but that's one thing I, I guess I love about like the theme parks or getting out to go meet people is uh, just kind of getting out of uh, <laughs> out of the place for a bit, out of the apartment, which is good for me because that's how uh, I operate best, I think. But yeah, I'm expecting... Um, or hoping, I should say, just for some good times ahead and more co-op stuff. Because uh, I was playing, like, The Ascent, and that was pretty good. I don't know how much more of it I have left, but uh, I was enjoying that, playing it uh, by myself, but also with other people. Um, Jason, shout out to Jason, DJ Strom, my buddy. Uh, yeah, um, and then the final one, what's my, my goatee up until now? I know it's a funny one to say, but really for me, new Pokemon Snap, I... That was the last big video game review I did. Maybe, I don't know if I'll, you know, that might be the biggest video game review I'll ever do again. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that game. And they added um, some new courses recently and stuff and uh, some new Pokemon. And it's just great. Uh, It is not exactly uh, the way... I, I would hope it to be like I, I kind of wish you know the music was a bit more memorable and I wish that the environments didn't need to try and kind of look not completely photorealistic but I think the charm of the original snap is that everything kind of blends together a little bit better but still there's some great moments um shout out to for alligator uh who pops up in the new river course <laughs> and just Pokemon um and Nintendo please I will pay full price for a new Pokemon or for a Pokemon Snap remaster, the original, not a remake, just a remaster. I will pay full price. I'm not kidding. Uh, <laughs> please, please. Um, or let me change the polka flute noise on my phone thing. Oh my gosh. And I have had honestly to look up a few things because I I'm like how how was I ever supposed to figure this out? I think it really kind of harkens back to like old school video game days where you're supposed to talk to other people or you're supposed to just play that one game so much and then like kind of stumble onto something uh but yeah yeah new pokemon snap probably has been my personal game of the year so far uh but yeah who knows in the next coming months uh that might shift but uh i again saying it again uh, alien fire teams elite has been has been fun it's been good um I still think I should I should really just try to chill with new Pokemon Snap though sometimes. Oh my gosh. And by the way, I was playing a bit of Pokemon Unite. Pokemon Unite was fun. It was good. I don't know if I'll go back to it anytime soon, but I enjoyed it. It was good. Great question. Great question. I'd also asked uh, everybody about what they thought of the PlayStation Showcase. And Mekareka, just the first thing he writes in all caps with how many exclamation points? Like five exclamation points? Just Wolverine! Wolverine! Seriously, though, that Wolverine announcement was completely out of left field and got me so hyped, and then followed up with a Spider-Man 2 trailer? What are those Mad Men and Insomniac doing? They're going to give me a heart attack. That, in and of itself, pretty much saved the show for me in what was otherwise a parade of good-looking games that were already announced and that we already knew a lot about, sans the KOTOR remake. Obviously, God of War Ragnarok was also expected, and it looks phenomenal seeing it in action, but I was expecting new stuff, and the two Marvel games kind of salvaged it all for me. Fair enough. And also Wolverine being in uh, Midnight Suns, which we haven't talked about, but that's like uh, Firaxis, the XCOM folks, making a Marvel game. Really curious to see how that one... Uh, we've seen a little gameplay, but I'm curious to see how that turns out. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm very curious. Uh, Mecha, so Venom will totally be playable in Spider-Man 2, right? Uh, that is a that is a great question. I have talked about this a few times before, but back in the day, a game came out called, I believe it was Ultimate Spider-Man on PlayStation 2, where you could swap between playing as uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, or Eddie Brock and Venom. And Venom in that game constantly lost health in his uh, health bar, so you had to go around and consume people and then, like, spit them out. Uh, like, that it was kind of weird. But he had this, like, R2, like, a super jump button, which was great. Uh, Spider-Man did not have that. But... Yeah, man, it was um, yeah, it was a cool game, and I just think that playing as Venom in a game like this again is like a total like it it could be on the table. Like you know, I said Grand Theft Auto Five before. Well, there were three people in that game, so I'm just saying. I'm not saying that it's the same company or anything, but 
what if we could trade between them? Or you get to play just a little bit, kind of Riku style in um, Kingdom Hearts 2. You play as Venom for like just a minute or two. <laughs> that would be really cool. Um, yeah, or that's what Mecha Rec was saying too. That would be pretty sick if they had a short section where you play as Venom. Um, and then uh, Zora says, no, 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 we are going full DMC5 here. A third of the time you will play Venom. I'm calling it, to which I responded, uh, you cannot kill me. I am a symbiote, as opposed to, you cannot kill me, I am Omega. You cannot kill me, I am subhuman. I'm knocking in the mic. I'm sorry, I'm getting too, too juiced up here on sub. Check out Subhuman, Devil May Cry 5, great song. Uh, but yeah, it was a cool showcase. Uh, like you said, um, like uh, Macareka said there, a lot of stuff was announced beforehand, but kind of seeing what, especially Insomniac, is working on. Man, that's got to be a big group. And uh, I want to uh, give a little nod to Missile Mage here because he was saying, I wonder if there was a time where Wolverine, Spider-Man 2, um, Miles Morales, and Ratchet and Clank, I think it was, all four of those were kind of in development but at different stages. Like, that's kind of a crazy thing to think about. Like, it's like, wow. Uh, maybe that's not true. Uh, but, that you know, the kind of if you look at the timelines and stuff, you're like, well, maybe it was, though. Like, I don't know. Uh, but it's cool to see that Insomniac, after you know getting the chance to pick and choose any uh, Marvel character, like they said back in the day, they chose Spider-Man, but maybe Wolverine was you know next up, and they're like, ooh, we want to do Wolverine. So that uh, opens it up to X-Men, which opens it up to a lot of different stuff. Uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for us here today. If you ever have a topic, an idea, or a question for the show, all you have to do is tweet the hashtag CriticalPodcast, and you can tweet at me personally. I'm a JimmyGood013, or you can tweet at our official Twitter, which is at GoCritical. Uh, we're, you know, like I said, I'm streaming on Twitch when I can, and I'm not sure how frequently I'll be able to do this show going in the future, if it's going to be once a week, once every other week. I'll try to do my best. Um, but yeah, I've kind of flirted with the idea of you know, maybe doing a podcast like this once a week and then, or once every other week and then putting another one in between there um, that might be completely different. I don't know. Um, it's just kind of what, um, you know, trying to figure out life out here um, and, you know, how to survive. Uh, so, and just kind of settling and stuff like that. So I appreciate so much that you guys have been patient with me. I really do. Uh, and I will try to keep making stuff for you. And that's the reason why you're probably seeing a lot of the vlogs, too. It's really easy for me. I love doing it. And it does not take nearly as much time as some of the more edited stuff I've done in the past. But I do have the old whiteboard over here and the green screen. So there's a good chance that other videos will be coming soon. Mm. <laughs> it's a tease. Uh, anyway. A huge thank you to everyone who um, subscribes to the YouTube channel here. Um, but if you're just listening, you know, a very via varying sites like Spotify or iTunes, I appreciate that. Um, the show is admittedly a hodgepodge, but that's just I, I just love a, a bunch of different things. So if you would you consider sharing it, if you leave a great review, uh, I would appreciate that. Or leave a bad review and just be like, hey, here's the reason why. Hey, I'm, I run critical reviews, so I understand, you know. <laughs> Um, and a huge thank you to our patrons who are supporting me throughout this crazy time. Uh, you know, even just a little bit here and there helps uh, just kind of keep me uh, going as far as like, you know, um, stuff for the channel as far as like, you know, being able to purchase a game to stream or to, you know, to do this or that. Uh, so I, I, I really do appreciate that. So thank you guys so, so much. And just a huge thank you for everybody who's listening. You know, it means a lot that people are still checking out the shows and checking out everything I'm doing. So I'm, I'm trying to do a lot, uh, but I'm also trying to focus up a bit because I do not want to be a jack of all trades. I'd like to be a master of a few different things. <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, I appreciate you guys. You're amazing. Thank you for being so patient. Love and hugs to you. Big, big hugs. If you're not a hugger, here's a handshake. If you're not a handshaker, here's a little tip of my hat that I don't wear. And until next time, just remember to adapt and overcome.